Flagstaff. Uh, some cloud to ground lightning there and some heavy downpours. If we zoom on into Phoenix, a quiet picture here in the valley right now at about noon. We'll take you through uh, a look at the satellite and radar map nationally. Quiet out there, uh, really across the country, but are, we are seeing some activity in the western part. You can see uh, some showers in Salt Lake, showers also uh, in Colorado right now, as, in, as well as in Idaho and Wyoming. And back here at home for our neck of the woods, we're going to see uh, temperatures right about average, which, you know, is what we expect, I guess, for this time of year in August. We'll get to that map right now. Uh, 105 in Phoenix, still going to be in the 60s in Flagstaff. So if you want a little relief from the heat, head on up north. 69 degrees, that sounds really nice. Uh, 105 in Yuma today. Temperatures uh, going to be uh, nice in Tucson, but they do have a big chance down in Tucson and Nogales of storms starting to fire up. That's probably the better chance. Um, so we see some gusty conditions. So of course, we'll be tracking that forecast uh, throughout the afternoon. And now your Valley Pinpoint forecast temperature is uh, going to be in above that triple digit mark. So get ready. Uh, 104, 105 ish territory for the rest of the day. And here's a look at your seven day forecast. Uh, so things going to be drying out and then back to uh, that almost that 110 category mm. by Saturday. So we're welcoming you to the weekend with some nice warm temperatures, <laughs> but just be prepared. Um, you know, we saw it yesterday. There was, you know, better chance of some showers and activity yesterday afternoon. Right. We saw it. So we're just kind of with it for a chance. Things could yes. fire up potentially later okay. on today. We'll be on guard. Yes. Thank you. Well, you're in luck. We're back on Panda oh, Watch. Panda Watch. After Can't get the enough break. of this. But this is some sad, at least interesting news. One of the new twins in Washington needs some help from doctors. But first, here's a look at what's coming up later tonight on CBS 5. Get breaking news. Done by ADT. ADT is the number one monitoring company at 109. I'm trying to hold the line on 109, Rick. Okay. And, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of power, but uh, sometimes I can bring it. Security system are going to receive a. Kristen doesn't like it hot. No, no I don't. But and I get is. cranky sometimes when it passes mm -hmm. like 105 ish. Mm -hmm. But it is on a weekend, so. You won't be held accountable. Christie's problem. Right. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> All we right. won't be here. Thanks, Corey. <laughs> Coming up after the break. A famous judge is now the... What was behind this individual? Was there, you know, doubtful, but was there anybody else involved? In, and, and what were his reasons for doing it? That in itself helps investigators in future crimes as well. Casey Jordan, criminologist. Uh, this, this is also so unique in that you have this deranged person who is obviously, you know, set on committing these crimes, follows through, comes prepared with, and I, I don't know for sure whether it was a GoPro camera strapped to him or his cell phone, I don't know, but that, you know, he, you, you see from the vantage point, and this is a video that I'm, we're not sharing, but we've seen it, most of us have seen it, you know, he waits to make sure that both of these individuals are in the shot before shooting what is he, that about it, it it's about the fact that he chose to do this on live television for maximum shock value and impact and to a huge extent he has succeeded in doing that uh, he at one point zooms and then actually the camera goes back a little bit at one point he turns away um, he's very close to the victims but it, it's he's so close but they are in the middle of a live broadcast and for those of us who work in live television you get peripheral vision where you don't see anything that's happening on the sides because you're just focusing on what you're doing at that time we have to hit a quick commercial break I appreciate you coming in on short notice very much more on those two journalists gone down uh, today including the father of one of those victims who says his grief is unbearable as I'm sure you no doubt understand that's next from the Fox News deck, and of course, life goes on for the rest of us, and we're watching on Wall Street the Dow up 565 and appears to be climbing. In the surrounding area, did it feel, do you know, earlier today, like a lockdown? I mean, people around the... Uh, the camera. This man was holding a gun in front uh, of himself for several seconds before pulling the trigger, but it didn't appear that they knew that when they were on the air. Yeah. They did appear to be completely stark off guard. And we, if I may just jump in for sure. a moment, we should point out that while he does put out these tweets, uh, speaking about Allison, speaking about Adam specifically, it doesn't necessarily really answer the question of why he targeted this young woman and this young man. We heard from the station manager today saying he doesn't believe that Allison uh, and this man, Bester Flanagan, ever even would have crossed paths at the station mm. because 
recall he was fired two years ago. She started there just about a year ago, interning a little bit before that. I'm also just now being told we know Hillary Clinton is in Iowa, uh, cutting her vacation short. She's back out on the trail. She also now has apparently just uh, spoken about what happened in Roanoke. Let's take a listen to Hillary Clinton. First of all, ice latte M&Ms. They're designed to put just stricken to think that these two young people doing the work that you guys do every single day would be this week. It is Hug Your Boss Week. A good boss will not only make your work life more enjoyable, but can it make a difference in your entire career? Adam explains in today's Phoenix Job Market Report. To find out how bosses made a difference in their former employees' lives. Condition. But I will also reiterate, we have got to do something about gun violence in America. And I will take it on. There are many people who face it and know it, but then turn away because it's see the uncertainty in people's eyes. Coming up, the Phoenix Mercury. We're in good company today. Yeah, why uh, they got to rub, rub elbows with the gives an epic in on important meetings and to make presentations. Good bosses demonstrate that they believe in their employees, not just through compensation, but also by continuously communicating that he or she values your talent and believes in you. For more tips and to get connected with entrepreneurs in the Phoenix area, contact the EO Phoenix chapter at www.eonetwork.org. With CBS 5 News, I'm Adam Longo. You get up to a without trying to do something more incredible, killing. A non-journalist who was hurt and is in the hospital, but also it was explicitly a crime by a, a former reporter here against colleagues who are journalists. Talk to us about that risk. Often people think of the, the biggest risk to journalists being reporting from war zones or hot conflict areas. The other states, I know it must now be in his head because I've seen other candidates like this that they run as mm. a long shot, and then when they become the front runner, they start to think, hey, you know, maybe I could be president of the United States, and I think that's definitely in his mind right now. The pale in effect. No? Well, good stuff. I mean, she never ran for president, so, yeah. No, no, and vice president. She seemed to be worried she, and not thinking it was going to work at and first. And then she gets swept up in yeah, the emotion. Exactly. She sees the big crowds and she sees the poll, good poll numbers and they get caught up in it. That's the high frequency traders a uh, a break so the general direction I'm not saying he was going there but headed in the general direction of the nation's capital after he had rented this vehicle earlier in the week and a police a state police officer had in her car a license plate reader that really was instrumental in catching him well she's talking about that and it started maybe a minute ago so I'm going to put it at the point of most interest and let you hear it here we go at 66 and 81 on the exit ramp from I-81 northbound to 66 eastbound. I had my car sitting there for approximately 15 or 20 minutes. And throughout the day, we were giving different suspect vehicle information. The last one came back as a, as a positive contact or positive that this will be the suspect vehicle that he was in. I took that suspect vehicle information and entered into my license plate reader. As soon as it was entered, it did come up with a positive hit that that vehicle just passed me less than three minutes earlier. Wow. What did you do after that? I let my dispatch know that that vehicle has passed me and I attempted to catch up to the vehicle which was traveling eastbound on 66. What did How fast is this? A lot more for a Going that fast, he was not going above the posted speed limit. Did, uh, you didn't initiate uh, lights and sirens immediately. What, what, mm. Talk to us about what you did. No, I did not. I waited until I had several other troopers with me to initiate a traffic stop. And what happened at that point? The suspect vehicle did not stop. Eventually, he did wreck the vehicle on the left-hand side of the road. And ran into the ditch there. That What we don't know is when he shot himself. When listening to authorities earlier, it sounded like it was possible that there was the shooting, the self-inflicted gunshot wound, then the move into the ditch. Uh, we don't know whether there was any altercation after that. We don't know there were, whether there was any contact. What we do know is that when authorities went up to the vehicle, he had shot himself. 
as you heard earlier, our reporters say they airlifted him to a, to a trauma center, a level one trauma center in the D.C. area. Uh, he later died of his injuries. The father of the reporter who died said he initially held out some hope that his daughter was be okay, would be okay, but now uh, he's crying his eyes out. That's the reporting of the Washington Post newspaper today. Let's bring in... Spencer's Labor Day. Work injury or workers... Take us through that part of your reporting. Yes, I can take you through it. Basically, stores could only dream of, and we're passing them all on to you. Save on all. This morning, he did not get a text message from her, and he grew nervous. Afterwards, he got text messages from uh, employees at the station where he works that he uh, found to be really alarming. Most Americans.